going on a summer holiday. No more working for a week or two. Now, who doesn't love that immortal song and the spirit that comes with it? And why not? It is that time of the year when many of you would be thinking about taking that much-needed break, the yearly holiday or perhaps that dream vacation. So you've thought of the place, you've thought of the people you want to meet, the things you want to do, maybe even the clothes you want to wear. But have you thought of finances? How will you pay for this vacation? How will you deal with Forex? And what about dealing with uh, potential travel mishaps? Joining me, Surabhi Upadhyay, on the show this week is Karthik Zaveria of Trans and Consulting and Rahul Agrawal, founder of Ideal Insurance Brokers. And these two gentlemen will help you plan that dream vacation. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking thank out the time and thank coming you. in. So um, it, it's a fun subject, but Absolutely. a fun subject which also requires a little bit of seriousness considering that it does involve sizable sums of money yes. now. So I'm going to start with the basics. Is there a thumb rule? We all want a, a massively lavish, wonderful vacation at the most exotic parts of the world. Absolutely. But how much can you spend? How do you decide, can I afford this holiday or not? Is there a rule that you go by, Karthik? Yes, without fail, we go by a rule. You know? And unfortunately, it's not like a last minute thing. It is generally pre-planned. It is planned about one year or two years or three years in advance. So what happens is every year, every now and then when we sit down with a family, we're talking about how much money do you want to really spend on a weekend holiday or a domestic holiday or an international holiday and when do you want to do it and then we start collecting a little bit of money bit by bit month by month i mean making sure that the entire financial planning does not go out of order and the financial planning where you're doing your children's education and retirement and all of that all that is absolutely hunky-dory and you still have a little budget for that because then what happens is the amount of actual surplus that you have at the time of taking that holiday you know, that kicks in for the extra shopping or the extra splurging that you want to do, mm. but at least you have your basic budget. So have your, your uh, other financial planning needs met first and Absolutely. then see whatever is yes, left indeed. and what you can actually afford. Precisely. That's a planner's perspective. What about a traveler's perspective? And I, I know Rahul, you love to travel yes. a lot. How do you decide how much of a holiday or how big a holiday can you afford? Yeah, I mean, I still agree to uh, what Mr. Zavedi said, you know, you need to actually work backwards on for deciding how much you want to spend on the holiday. Now, it can also actually, you know, differ from a salaried person and a business person, right? For mm -hmm. a salaried person, he knows his salary, so he has to first take care of his expenses, the savings that he planned to have, and then whatever balance money he has, he can spend that on the holiday, mm -hmm. right? So, that's... So, uh, is there a thumb rule that, that you kind of work with that, okay, X yeah, amount of my so annual <laughs> income or, or is there some kind of a formula? Yeah, so I splurge on my holidays, right? That That's my biggest <laughs> expense. I, lo I love... And being young, I don't... Uh, you know, I don't believe in saving too much, right? Okay. On the contrary. <laughs> the delightful so. conversation between the, the young traveler and yeah. the financial person. So it actually okay. depends, you know, because I see a lot of the younger crowd, they are actually, uh, right now, uh, they are on the right side of the age. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of my friends spending a lot of money on holiday. Mm -hmm. So as when you have kids and when you have more responsibility, then of course you can bring down the budget. But mm -hmm. it totally depends from person to person. Okay, okay, but all right. Yes, of course, uh, you need to first take care of expenses savings and then mm -hmm. holiday. You have to be prudent even when it comes to yes. a holiday. So the point uh, to debate next is what sort of a holiday, how do you go about paying? And Karthik, let me come in over here. Sure. Because uh, you have the option of either going to a travel agent and then you get a lump sum, uh, if it's a foreign holiday, let's say a lump sum, two lakh, three lakh uh, rupee investment or expenditure rather that's, that's required. On the other hand, a lot of people are now doing uh, their own holidays, doing That's their right. own bookings. So then how do you decide how much to spend, where to spend, make the entire upfront payment, etc.? You know, the biggest advantage in a do-it-yourself DIY kind of a holiday and which is uh, the preferred choice these days is that you can plan everything that you want. You can go to the hotel you want, you can choose the airline that you want and the most important thing in terms of money, mm -hmm. you don't have to shell out that money today. So for example, if you went into a travel company today and said, I want to take a European package and they said four lakhs, you have to just fork it out up front. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, you pay it on your credit card and then you have the installment facility either through your credit card or you've taken a personal loan and then you're paying the travel agent, but basically you're paying right now yeah. versus that for example if you're booking your tickets you book your tickets on a card credit card debit card debit card not necessarily but a credit card so that you have time to pay you can stagger your payments so you might have easily about 30 days to 60 days you know depending on 30 days to 50 days depending on your credit card cycle that is one when you're booking your hotels now these days you have fabulous uh, booking sites like booking.com hotels.com and quite a like uh, similar number of sites here you can actually block your hotel and not pay a dime just mm -hmm. to authenticate your credit card, they might charge you $1 on that or 1 euro, depending on which place it is. But 
only one dollar is charged just to authenticate your credit card is valid the credentials are good mm -hmm. and then you can actually when you go to the destination you actually pay so, so what's the advantage of of doing that as opposed to making the upfront payment i mean it's just that you're retaining your money with you so you're retaining your money thing. with you yes yeah. plus you're having the chance to change your mind up to as much as 24 hours or 48 hours before your holiday so you might want to block four different kind of hotel properties mm. you see then you can do more and more research on that you know whenever you have the time on your phone on your tab um, in the evening whatever you are doing mm -hmm. assuming that you at least have about seven to ten days or 15 days before you actually take off so while you're doing that just before 48 hours if you cancel most properties will allow you a free cancellation mm -hmm. so then you just exactly choose what you want then you go to that place and then you are making a payment again using your credit card debit card whatever the case might be again your credit cycle is for another 30 to 60 days sure so your same holiday you can safely assume that you can spend about 20% more if you stagger these payments in this fashion. Okay, okay. Is that a concept that sort of uh, uh, you agree with Rahul? I mean, personally speaking, how do you prefer to decide how you're going to spend? I mean, how much is a different matter, but the manner in which you're going to be spending that money? So I actually prefer to go by a travel agent, okay? Mm -hmm. But yes, of course, you have to be very careful when you're choosing a travel agent. Yeah. Today, like a doctor and a lawyer, you need to have a trusted travel agent, otherwise mm -hmm. you'll be taken for a big ride. Mm -hmm. You know, as I've realized sometimes, you know, so I still take, ask my travel agent to uh, tell me some right locations because I prefer a travel agent who's himself traveled a lot, mm. okay, rather than just going on website. So they can exactly tell you which are the right places to go and not the popular places, mm -hmm. right? People tend to go to the same places they hear, but there are a lot more exotic places which a travel agent, uh, mm -hmm. you know, can guide you. Uh, so I ask for a quote and I actually go on website and check it because I've seen even for a you know, uh, airport booking in a European country, which might otherwise charge you 2,500 rupees Indian, they may charge you six to 7,000 rupees. Mm -hmm. So I verify because they ultimately also book on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. always good to take a quote and just verify it uh, on the mm -hmm. internet and then mm -hmm. discuss with the travel agent. So Karthik, just come in on this. Um, in terms of, as you said, I mean, you can make a lot of these bookings. Uh, you That's need right. not pay the entire amount upfront, but in terms of how to pay, if you're going to be paying through credit cards, what are the charges that one should be aware of? See, practically you have to understand that when you are exchanging your money through your bank, you're going to get a slightly preferred rate of exchange while you're doing your foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. But when you're paying through a visa, you might be landing up paying a little bit more. And that little bit more is not going to be more than a one and a half to two percent more. Mm -hmm. So for example, even if you make a total payment of five lakhs, a one to one and a half percent or even a two percent maximum extra payment is going to be about 10,000 rupees or maybe somewhere in the range of five to 10,000 rupees, which is not going to really change the entire economics for you. But the convenience that is going to give you is enormous. Plus you have the option of, you know, at zero balance, you know, make it into an EMI with the credit card company sure. or pay at your convenience when you have yeah. that money, maybe a month or two down the line. Okay, we're going to take a break on that note. Travel special on money, 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 and we are in conversation with Karthik Zaveri as well as Rahul Agarwal. So we've been speaking about how to make payments. Now the question is foreign exchange. If you're going to a foreign destination, you need to be handling foreign currency. Rahul, what is the mode that you prefer? I mean, do you prefer to pay by cards throughout or is it advisable, you think, to perhaps exchange some of your Indian currency into the, the currency where you're actually going? What mode do you follow? When I started traveling, uh, you know, 10 years back, I used to carry cash, but then that's not a great idea anymore. Now you have a lot more better options. So now, of course, uh, the, the flight and the hotel bookings are already prepaid, mm -hmm. right, on your credit card or through travel agent. Apart from that, I prefer to, uh, I prefer to use my credit card more. Okay. It's not advisable to carry too much of cash because mm -hmm. there are a lot of chances of, uh, you know, losing cash and plus... Uh, somehow, uh, you know, the people, uh, if there are crooks around in foreign countries, they know you're a traveler and they know where to catch your cash. Yeah. And as uh, um, Mr. Zaveri said about uh, the, uh, the, the travel cards, yeah. now there are a lot of prepaid travel cards where you can actually load your currency and carry the mm -hmm. card rather than currency. Okay. Should have minimum amount of currency just for the basic essentials on the way. But uh, apart from that, I prefer using my card most of the time. So, Karthik, help us now understand all types of possible cards, including these travel cards, the regular debit card, the credit card. What's the best form of plastic to use when you're on your foreign holiday? Okay. So let's first eliminate. Hmm. So you don't use your debit card okay. because your debit card, your Indian debit card, although it's going to be accepted everywhere across the world, mm -hmm. as soon as you use it, your amount is going to be withdrawn or rather you have to have the amount in your, in your bank account. Right. Only then a debit card will work. Mm -hmm. So you put the debit card aside because even okay. if you have the money, you want to have the facility of using that in an extreme emergency. Hmm. If there's nothing else available on your credit limits, if you maxed out for whatever reason, okay. things like that. So debit card is a no. Hmm. The second thing that you definitely don't want to do is use a credit 
credit card to put into an ATM machine in a foreign country and pull out money. So don't try and withdraw dollars or euros or Absolutely. wherever you are, whatever currency you are dealing with, yes. using your credit Cre card. Using your credit card. Okay, and why not? For, and reason for that is very simple. The moment you take out that money, it is considered that your interest has going to begin from that day itself because you made a cash withdrawal. See, on a credit card, normally what happens is if you don't pay within the payment cycle or if you just make the minimum payment, then you're going to start paying that 3.5-4% interest per month on the credit card. Hmm. But as soon as you withdraw cash, then that interest starts immediately. So there you. is no 30-day or whatever, 40-day grace period? No, that, that period, window you that don't sort. have on a credit okay. card, which is why you don't want to do that, you know, plus a security reason, obviously you don't hmm. want to. So you use your credit cards for paying your restaurant bills, maybe, or, you know, some shopping that you do. So that, swipe it at fine. merchant outlets, mm. don't withdraw cash. Absolutely. Because that okay. merchant outlet, you will get the benefit of the window period. Hmm. Now, for the requirement that you will have, for cash requirement, so you carry minimum cash with you, you know, just look at the country that you're going to uh, from the internet by doing a little bit of search or even your travel agent could help you. How much is the daily cash requirement that you'll really need, you know, to pay for small things like taxi fares and, you know, maybe some transportation fares and some shopping, miscellaneous. Shopping, let's not forget. The, yeah. Not the big ticket shopping, but, but the small the, the little things that, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. you'll buy from the streets, things like yeah, that. So you'll yeah. have to estimate a daily okay. budget for that and, you know, carry that much amount of cash. The very interesting thing that you can do is to carry a multi-currency prepaid a dollar card or you know dollar euro card which is available very very easily from most of the banks in India. Indian banks or are we talking about the likes of Amex or uh, HSBC? No, no, Indian banks. We are talking okay. about HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, okay. uh, Bank of India. I mean everybody gives you these sure, kind of cards. Sure, sure. So it's very simple. You're exchanging foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, you're taking foreign exchange. You're, you're buying your dollars, euros, whatever you need. And this card is loaded for you. Okay. Okay. Now this card comes, it's a, it's a chip card, so it comes with a pin. Okay. So whether you're using it at a merchant establishment, you'll have to put in your pin. So you're, you're actually spending in dollars if you're in America, for example. Or if you're in euros, you're actually spending only in euros. And the card will debit your euros because it is preloaded with But that. then what is the advantage of uh, swiping this card over using your regular credit card? Because here as well, I mean, the advantage That's is right. the same that you have to swipe it at different merchant Absolutely. outlets. Absolutely. So between a credit card and this prepaid travel card, That's what right. are the advantages and disadvantages? This is just a replacement of cash. Okay. Your credit card would be for larger ticket items which you want to stagger the payment. Sure. But for any destination that we would go, we mm -hmm. will take a small amount of money with us. Mm -hmm. In within that small amount of money, we are bifurcating into two parts, saying that the cash, the absolute hard cash is going to be very small mm -hmm. and you are using your card for other things. Okay. Because this card, this travel card, you can use at merchant establishments as mm -hmm. well for your shopping and things like that. You can use this also to put into any ATM machine, put in your PIN and withdraw local currency out of that. Okay. Because you've already loaded dollars or euros or ringgits or Singapore dollars or Aussie dollars or whatever you want or Canadian dollars. And usually on that you, you card. load this card with a single currency or is it a multiple currency You option? can load it with multiple currencies now. So okay. there was a time okay. only single currencies were available. These days you get multiple currencies. So you can load as much as five different currencies on that particular card. So you could mm -hmm. have 500 US dollars, 500 Sing dollars, 500 euros mm -hmm. and then whichever country you are in, you can very nicely and comfortably put that card into an ATM machine and withdraw local currency there. And okay. you know, you're not going to even get hurt on exchanges because the currency that will come out will only come out from the balance you have prepaid on your card. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you can actually reload more money on your card through your Indian net banking account if you have an access to a computer, okay. which is another facility. And that the conversion then will take place at the Indian rate? At, the, know, at, the, at the prevailing would... rate of your yeah, bank, you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So, which is anyways going to be a pretty competitive rate. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to travel, it's a great matter of convenience. And when you come back, you can just kind of empty the card and all the money will cre get credited back to your bank account, you know. Oh, so there's no hassle of, okay, now I have to yes. again convert my uh, unutilized foreign currency Or you can notes. just keep it with yeah. you if you're going to travel in the next six or eight months okay. and go to another country and use the same card. You're Okay. It's like a card, which is yours, and you can use it for as long as you want. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll take another break on that note. On the other side, we've discussed the payment vacation. So we've spoken about a lot of aspects that go into holiday planning. One of the most important aspects is risk mitigation. Is travel insurance actually necessary? Well, let's ask Rahul Rao. This is an area of uh, you know expertise for you. Travel insurance has been picking up over the last couple of uh, years. People have understood its relevance. But... Um, where do we start from? What all should the policy be covering? What kind of policies are available in the market? Okay. So the good thing is normally most of the travel policies which are available in the market, they have all the good covers which are needed. It's a package policy. So it's not that you have to ask the insurance company to choose and uh, give it to you. So in one single price, you get most of the covers that are needed. What you have to choose is primarily the sum insured. Right, which can start from twenty thousand dollar to two lakh dollar. Mm -hmm. Right, so that you actually can choose depending on which country you are going. So if you are going to Asian country, then maybe twenty thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar is more than sufficient. If you are going to a European or a American country, then you might need at least fifty thousand dollar or more. 
-hmm. right? Apart from that, uh, uh, policy is a very standard policy with most of the good covers which are needed. So, what all is covered under a typical okay. in, uh, okay. tra travel insurance so, policy? So, uh, it covers a host of risk which starts from uh, losing your uh, passport to losing your baggage to a personal accident, it covers your death, it covers any hospitalization which might happen, mm -hmm. okay, uh, loss, loss of, of baggage. baggage trip delay, you mm -hmm. miss a connecting flight because your flight is late and you have to stay back in some uh, country and spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Your baggage is delayed and you have to buy more clothes and mm -hmm. other provisions. Mm -hmm. So it covers, you know, all the things that can possibly but, uh, go what wrong. what about riders? I mean, I don't want to compare, but for instance, health insurance, everybody wants it everywhere. Yes. But the moment you go for a claim, there are so many riders. Is that the case with travel insurance also? Not really. So fortunately, mm -hmm. travel insurance does not have too many riders. But mm -hmm. the only thing is your trip delays and other things mm -hmm. that has to... Uh, that only triggers when it is not your fault okay if if you know you 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 probably were sleeping and missed the flight you cannot get that claim <laughs> the insurance company will find out that you overslept yes. or overpartied yeah. the previous so flight. it's okay. only because of the fault of the airline or mm. for example recently in Heathrow a lot of people got delayed because there was ash cloud mm -hmm. so that's a very typical case on you know where your policy gets triggered so it has to be situations which are not in your control mm -hmm. okay another very important cover is uh, so if if uh, you get sick very sick it also covers somebody traveling from your native country to help help you out or if somebody dies then a repatriation of remains so it's a very very comprehensive cover mm -hmm. so I mean and, it's um, uh, is it best to go for sort of individual policies or can one go for a group policy if you're traveling with family and also um, I'm guessing travel insurance will have to be bought uh, for every trip or can there be policies with well you know when you want like let's say a year's coverage if you know you have several trips coming up then can you get better premiums yes so there are policies uh, which are multi-trip and for a span of 180 days to one year because there are a lot of people who travel throughout the year. They can mm -hmm. be business travelers, they can be leisure travelers also because there are a lot of people they know I'm anyway going to travel two or three times a year. For them it makes sense to take a yearly policy, it costs cheaper also and it prevents a hassle of taking a policy again and again mm -hmm. and you don't have to remember at the last moment that you need to take a policy. So, so give us some uh, sense of the sort of premium that we're talking about here. I mean I was just uh, you know doing an experiment so for an average 40 year old person going to let's say Europe which is not a very high risk destination, the cover were ranging between 600 to 700 rupees for an individual policy yes. for a single person yes so give us some examples of uh, let's say uh, a one trip policy cover how the premiums range and okay. also for a multi-trip uh, 180 okay. day or one year policy so uh, for Europe let's mm -hmm. say taking your example if you're going for a trip for less than seven days as you correctly said for an age of person of around age 40 it will not cost more than a thousand rupees if the trip is let's say 15 days it may go up to 1400 rupees for we are talking about a 50,000 euro cover. If the cover is let's say a lakh euro, this 1,400 will become maybe 1,800, 2,000. But th that is not going to pinch your pocket at all. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's still because 2,000 rupees, uh, you know, uh, for a holiday is hardly anything. Uh, the premiums are cheaper, of course, when you are going to Asian country or African country. The same 800 and 1,400 will be 400 and 600 in Asian country, okay. right? Because the cost of healthcare is much less there compared to a European country. Mm -hmm. So this is the premium range. So typically, Europe and USA premiums you yes. are te tends yes. to be higher, yes. whereas Asia and Africa premiums are, yes. are on the lower side. Yes. And finally, um, in the event that you do need to make a claim, and you know, an event triggers off uh, something like this, then what's the process of going about it? I mean, okay. how do you initiate the payout process, the payment process? Okay. In the policy document, you have all the numbers of the country where you are going, you can call on a helpline number and help uh, for the guidance. Otherwise, you can always call your intermediary. That's the right thing to do. Just tell your intermediary, your agent or a broker, whoever it is, that you know, I have faced this problem and they can do everything on your behalf. But even if you don't get a support from your intermediary, all the numbers are there on the policy document. Mm -hmm. So, uh, India numbers, uh, you know, are European or uh, American numbers. So, you can call them up and normally they are very helpful. So there's no no hassles in the and claim. And in, in terms of claim settlement, now this is not like you know taking a, a MediClaim cashless card. So, in terms of let's say in the event of you losing your your luggage in which you've lost your valuables and your um, you know your documents. So in that case, how does the insurance policy come into play, and how how soon can you expect help? So the cashless is very much there if you're hospitalized. 
Right. Right. Of course, if you're hospitalized, uh, no one can expect you to carry like 10, 20 lakh rupees Indian. So mm -hmm. there's a cashless there. But for other coverages, mm -hmm. you might have to come back to India and claim them. Okay. So you take care of expenses at yes. that point, and then you can come back yes. and, and uh, get the reimbursement. Yes. And and India, the products are still evolving. You know, a lot of new products are coming up. So you might see a time where uh, mm -hmm. if you lose your belongings, you might get some immediate cash uh, from mm -hmm. your bank in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the foreign country. Okay. So. so as we wind down this conversation, I certainly feel very inspired to take a holiday. Day. I'm just wondering, <laughs> are you planning on any time soon, Karthi? Absolutely. And by listening to him, actually, I, it, it comes to my mind that if you actually lose your luggage, mm -hmm. maybe you want to sp split your money across different people who, if you're traveling, you know, with yes. your family. Mm -hmm. So yes. you don't want to have all your money there because if you have to spend money from your own pocket, mm -hmm. then come to India and claim it and back. And then claim, exactly. So, so you rather distribute your money, just not ha let have one person, you know, holding on, on to all the money. Yeah. And yes, I mean, I'll remember that every time I plan <laughs> a holiday now. So. All right, Rahul and Karthik, thank you so much for taking out the time and joining in on the show today. We hope this has been helpful for you. That's it on this edition of Money, Money, Money. Until next week.